Ladies and gentlemen, Skyburner's Oath was a scout rifle that in the past was heralded as one of the worst exotic weapons in Destiny 2. Good news though, just recently it did receive a rework. So what's different? When aiming down sights, this weapon is now truly hit scan. Hipfire and ADS will now have the same 150 RPM fire rate. Hipfire projectiles are more like grenade launcher grenades. No more tracking but a larger detonation size. Hipfire detonations will apply scorch. Skyburner's Catalyst used to increase range. This is being moved intrinsically into the weapon. It's going to be replaced with the reload speed boost from the Catalyst instead. And Skyburner's has the highest airborne effectiveness stat for any weapon. So, a good amount of tweaks and changes here. And then even more recently, High Impact Scout Rifle saw a buff in PvP, which should include Skyburner's Oath. Body shot damage is going from 38.2 to 42, and crits are moving from 66.9 to 73.5. We'll see how this ultimately affects things in the PvP testing section. We'll kick things off though with a look at the weapon's stats and perks. Skyburner's Oath is a solar exotic scout rifle that fires at 150 rounds per minute with 20 rounds in the magazine. For the stats, I'll pull in the entire set of numbers from light.gg. And given the fact that this is a 150 RPM scout, the stat line is looking rather nice. The range is good at 80, the 50 in stability is solid, and the 65 in handling is strong given the archetype. The catalyst boosted reload stat isn't too shabby, while the aim assist and recoil at 90 and 100 are exceptional. Airborne effectiveness is 35. If Bungie says that's the best in the game, I'm going to take their word for it. Skyburner's intrinsic trait is Slug Rifle. This weapon lobs explosive slugs. When aiming down sights, the slugs travel fast and straight. When firing from the hip, the explosion is larger and applies scorch. The exotic perk on Skyburner's is for the Empire. This weapon is full auto. It does extra damage to Cabal and penetrates Phalanx shields. And if you've yet to acquire this weapon, it is simply a random drop. If you need the Catalyst, it can drop as a completion reward from any of the core playlist activities. To punch it out, 1,000 Cabal kills with this weapon. So, enjoy. But with that, let's move on to the damage and functionality section, starting out with some utility points for this weapon. Skyburner's Oath is going to see a flat 10% damage increase versus Cabal targets. I found a crit dealt 8,447 versus a non-Cabal baseline red bar, and 9,291 versus a Cabal. Against the baseline major, 4,547 for non-Cabal, and 5,003 versus Cabal. 10% in both cases. Also, as advertised, it will punch clean through a phalanx shield with no reduction to the weapon's damage. Both ADS and hipfire slugs do deal blast damage. When aiming down sights, it is extremely tight, but the hipfire blast does seem to be quite generous. So, 3 for 3, Bungie. As far as the airborne effectiveness, I'll just say that this weapon does feel quite accurate when in the air. Slugs go where the weapon is pointing, with seemingly very little bullet deviation, provided you're not trying to stretch it out to extreme ranges. And this is with no aspects or exotics boosting the stat. For the weapon's recoil, while making no attempt to control or steady the weapon, the ADS grouping is very consistent. Things are a bit more erratic when firing from the hip, which is to be expected, but it's really nothing too terrible. I also tried to give you a sense of the bullet drop when hip firing the weapon. It doesn't exactly plummet like a rock, but it does fall a fair amount before contacting the wall. For the reload speeds, at base I have it clocked in at 2.03 seconds, and with a single scout rifle loader mod equipped, we can drop that to 1.57. And yes, the hip fired rounds are applying scorch, which I'll be getting into as we move into the damage testing. But first, my general disclaimer. PvE damage numbers are variable and will change depending on content scaling or enemy tier. This is why I do all of my testing in the Conflux Lost Sector on Nessus versus Carl the Colossus. Keep these numbers consistent and comparable from video to video. Skyburners will score a combined 5,003 points of damage on a crit and 3,029 points of damage to the body. And it doesn't matter if you're aiming down sights or firing from the hip, except for the fact that hip-fired rounds do apply scorch. A single shot sees four scorch ticks roll off at 228 apiece, but in a single magazine at base, I was able to run the initial scorch ticks up to 959 points of damage. With Ember of Ashes equipped, it will climb slightly higher to 1,379. This is applying scorch stacks as well. In this video where I did a good bit of ignition testing, I figured each round was tacking on about 2.67 stacks. Maybe three, but we're right in that neighborhood. It's a nice scorch supplement, but all on its own, even with Ember of Ashes equipped, it's not enough to ignite a target within a single magazine. But because of the ramping scorch, the max single mag damage will be achieved when hip firing this weapon. And good luck landing these all as crits, but in theory, we're looking at a potential 108,279 points of damage, not including the Scorch Afterburn. Time to fire off all 20 rounds comes in at a lengthy 7.6 seconds. Single mag damage per second, 14,247. For a comparable weapon, how about we look at the other solar exotic 150 RPM scout rifle, Polaris Lance. 
With this weapon, bullets that land as crits are refunded straight back into the magazine, so I'll just cap the rounds at 20 to keep it in line with Skyburners. So we're seeing 4200 points of damage on a crit. The perfect fifth round, which there will be four of, deals an additional 4667 points of blast damage and five burn ticks, not scorch, at 452 points of damage for each round. Grand total from 20 rounds fired, 111,708. Since the weapons do share the same fire rate, the time to empty will come in at 7.6 seconds as well. Damage per second, 14,698. A shade better than Skyburners, even though it's not getting the 10% extra damage versus Cabal. But I mean, really, if you're using a scout rifle to whittle down a big boy target, you're probably in a bad spot. Skyburners really isn't a bad tool for covering general ad clearing duties from all ranges. At distance, it's an accurate, sturdy, and solid feeling scout rifle. It doesn't require a whole lot of effort to land your crits. Up close, where slow firing scout rifles tend to falter, Skyburners has you covered with its explosive hip fire slugs. And even though these rounds did lose their tracking, the larger blast radius allows them to clean up mobs of trash ads quite efficiently. Plus, the extremely good airborne effectiveness allows the wielder to accurately play shots while moving to evade damage. And with this being a scorch applying weapon, we do get some extra tick damage and some very nice synergy opportunities within the Soar 3.0 subclasses making this a weapon that you could build around or allow it to supplement certain aspects of a solar setup that you're already running. Also worth mentioning, some of the Season of the Haunted Artifact mods. There's Unstoppable Scout Rifle, Rays of Precision, or Flame Harvest thing that could be nice mods to pair with this weapon. They won't be around forever, but there is value in these mods here in Season 17, as long as you're okay with the energy costs. For some drawbacks, while the range versatility is great, it doesn't have that one thing in PvE that it does exceptionally well. An exotic like Sunshot can provide much better close range ad clearing with its explosion chaining. Tikus, which is a great endgame caliber solar exotic bow, can give you strong primary damage while picking off trash ads from range. And if you need a solar scout rifle, Polaris Lance does have slightly better damage output, even versus Cabal targets, with the help of the perfect fifth explosions. If it's the Scorch synergy that you're craving, Legendary primaries like Strident Whistle, Callus Mini Tool, or Drang with the Incandescent perk can work out just fine in many cases, while not taking up your exotic slot. So while I do appreciate the update to Skyburners, this still isn't a weapon that I'm personally drawn to using. It just doesn't have that wow factor for me that I really dig with a lot of the other exotic weapons in Destiny 2. I mean, the weapon's solid, but I want just a little bit more than solid when looking at a PvE exotic. But how about the Crucible? How's Skyburners faring in PvP? For the recently buffed damage numbers, we're seeing 74 on a crit and 43 or 44 to the body. This is mainly due to number rounding and I'd say that the provided numbers of 73 and a half and 42 are accurate. The optimal time to kill still sits at 0.8 seconds. Versus tier five resilience guardians or more, you'll need three crits, but two crits in one body will take care of a guardian running four or less. The body shot time to kill is gonna be 1.6 seconds with five shots landed versus all resilience tiers. For the blast, the maximum radius when aiming down sights is about 2 meters. To see the full collateral damage, you're going to need two targets sharing the same pair of boots. When hip firing, you'll be able to see that full damage from 2 meters with the maximum radius pushed out to about 4. And the scorch applied from Skyburners is generated from the hip fired blast. So as long as you catch an enemy player with that, they'll see one scorch tick at 4 points of damage and have three scorch stacks applied to them. The physical range is a non-issue for Skyburners since shots fired when aiming down sights do not have damage fall off. In hip-fired rounds, since they are projectile-based, will not see damage fall off either. Now, if you have a 15% damage buff, like an Empowering Rift or High Energy Fire, you'll be able to go 2 crit in one body versus all Resilience tiers. Radiant's 10% buff doesn't quite have enough punch to achieve the same results though, but it will allow for a 4-shot body shot kill when hip-firing due to the assistance of the Scorch damage. With a 15% buff, when aiming down sights and unassisted by the Scorch ticks, we can still pull this off versus a Guardian running tier 6 Resilience or less. One last major thing to note, hit registration can be inconsistent with Skyburners. I notice this most when hip firing in full auto. Even though five rounds are expended from the weapon, sometimes all five rounds do not seem to connect. This will leave an opposing guardian standing when lethal damage should have been delivered. It's an issue that's plagued Skyburners for a while, and it would be really nice to see this cleaned up one of these days. For Skyburners performance in PvP, it's not too bad actually. I was pretty rusty going into this, I just haven't been in the Crucible very much this season, but I was still able to put together some decent matches with Skyburners. Like in PvE, the ability to handle a wide variety of engagement ranges is very convenient. When used like a traditional scout rifle, given the high range stat to no damage fall off and a very good aim assist value, 
It's accurate, it's forgiving, and it sports a competitive, optimal time to kill. And I do like the more low-profile sights on this weapon. The weapon frame itself has a little bit of chunk to it, but there's not much hindering your field of view here. When playing in close, the explosions from the hip-fired shots are gonna be your best friend. You'll probably be working more towards that 1.6 second body shot time to kill, since these hip-fired shots are not really a reliable source of crits, but you are able to stay mobile and make your opponent miss while spamming these rounds at him. This can make you a nuisance in a Crucible game. And given the weapon's high airborne effectiveness, you can make better use of your vertical space, comfortably engaging from the air. The Scorch Ticks, while short-lived, can provide a brief indication of an enemy player's movement if they break line of sight, while delaying their health regen for just a moment. And those explosive rounds are also nice for scoring some damage or cleaning up a kill on a Guardian who just stepped behind a piece of cover. Or they can be spammed down hallways to serve as a deterrent, perhaps making enemy players consider another route, or just use the harass. Even if outright securing the kill is not a real possibility, you can keep enemies pinned down and prevent them from fighting back effectively since blast damage in general carries a heavy amount of flinch. Drawbacks, it's still a scout rifle at its core and most effective from longer range. While it does perform better than most scout rifles up close, it's not exactly ideal. Like I said earlier, that body shot time to kill is probably more what we can realistically expect from closer range. And there are a whole slew of weapon types in the game that can sit you down a lot faster than 1.6 seconds when in close. And because of that, Skyburners can feel inherently weaker on smaller maps with shorter sight lines and less room to operate. Lastly, I can see the weapon losing some appeal if you mainly play on Hunter or Titan. It's pretty fun waging aerial combat on a Warlock with the ability to float around while using Icarus Dash or Heat Rises. Titans may kind of be able to mimic that effect, but due to the nature of the Hunter Jump, they just don't have the ability to hang and bang which kind of does negate a really cool aspect of the gun. But if you haven't given this weapon a shot recently in the Crucible, I think Skyburners is at least worth dusting off and trying out, if you think the weapon could complement your playstyle. And while it's still not really an exotic that I'm terribly interested in for PvE, I might take it into PvP a bit more often. In the matches that I played for the sake of this review, the results did hold some promise, and I'm curious to see if that trend continues. But hey, if you did enjoy this video, please remember to leave it a like and consider subscribing to the Ironworker Gaming channel if you'd like to catch more of my Destiny 2 content in the near future. If you have any additional thoughts or anything to add to the conversation, leave them down below and I'll be sure to take a look. And with all that being said, I'd like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to check out this weapon review. You guys are awesome, and I will catch you on the next one.